because we have reduced due to COVID, we used to have a polling station with maximum 1,500. Now we have made the qualifying thing to be 1,000. We have also ensured that all polling stations are on the ground floor. That is completely non-negotiable. So Assam, the polling stations in 2016 were 24,890. 2021, 33,530. Percentage increase in polling stations, 34.71. Tamil Nadu, we had 66,007 polling stations. Number of polling stations in 2021 are 88,936. Percentage increases 34.73%. West Bengal, it was 77,413 in 16 and 1,1916 now. The percentage increases 31.65%. Sorry? 1,1916. And the percentage increase is 31.65 percent. Is it okay? Kerala, we had 21,498. Now we have 40,771. The percentage increase is 89.65 because the population is so dense. The density of population is so much. Puducherry is 930. Number of polling stations now is 1559. The increase is 67. Point 60%. Why, my friends, I'm trying to mention this is that this also means that much more polling personnel, that much more security personnel, because the norm, norms for the polling personnel and the security personnel remain the same. And although we try that, our CEOs try that the auxiliary polling stations, as we call them, are near the original polling stations so that we can kind of optimize on the utilization of manpower. You are all aware that after taking the inputs from several stakeholders, the Commission had issued uh, a set of guidelines for COVID in the context of COVID on 22nd August 2020. The inputs were taken from political parties as well as from our CEOs of all the states and duties. We also mentioned in that that whereas uh, these guidelines are as per the, generally as per the NDMA uh, guidelines and uh, issued by Ministry of Home, but at the same time, as, in fact, as is mentioned in the MHA guidelines also, the states can make local variations and local changes, keeping in view their own milieu. However, this is the paradigm. We keep coordinating with the Ministry of Health and keep a very close watch on the health situation in the pole-bound states. The rollout of vaccine pro program, vaccination program has further contributed to a much a more positive uh, environment as compared to earlier and probably is gradually boosting the confidence of people for coming elections. I am glad to report to you that on the recommendations of the Commission, Health Ministry has already declared all our poll officials as frontline workers for vaccination. And the Commission has taken a conscious, has taken a conscious decision that after all our frontline workers are vaccinated, then only in the headquarters, it will start from the, let's say, from the MTS, the uh, helpers, and the commission will get vaccinated in the end and not in the beginning. <clears throat> Elections, by definition, involve large gatherings of people at various stages of electoral activity, whether it is nomination or campaigning, it is of paramount importance, therefore, to mitigate the likely health impact and reduce chances of transmission among the people. Several steps have been taken to address the issues. You are aware of most of them, but I'll still report. On October 
29, 22nd October 29, as you are aware, on the recommendation of the Commission, the concept of absentee voters was introduced. Postal ballot facility had been extended as an option, I repeat, as an option to senior citizens aged 80 years and above, persons with benchmark disability flagged in the electoral roll, and electoral, electorals, electors occupied or employed in essential services, for example, metros, uh, all these things which the local CEO identifies uh, in close coordination with the uh, DEC of that area, and those in notification is accordingly made. Nodal health officers are also appointed at the state district levels to ensure all related arrangements and preventive measures during the entire electoral process. A separate SOP is there for the uh, COVID-19 patients, uh, suspects, quarantined for their voting. That has already been issued by the Commission. Polling time has been uniformly increased. It was done in Bihar also. Again, also it's being repeated by one hour. And the decision is taken by the local CEO in close consultation with the DEC concerned. <coughs> Several processes and procedures have been made available online in order to minimize person-to-person -person contact and prevent congregation of large number of people. But that doesn't mean that those people cannot exercise Offline, offline cannot adopt offline procedure for those things. To the number of persons uh, accompanying a candidate for submission of nomination has been restricted to two, and the number of vehicles is also restricted to two. Candidates later on can also seek electoral certification digitally, besides filling the nomination form and affidavit online, and the printout, printout submitted to the RO. But as I said, these things can be, these rights can be accessed offline also. Security money can also be deposited on the online board. Door-to-door -door campaigning has been restricted to 5%, including the candidate. Roadshows are allowed, subject to the convoy being broken after every five vehicles. Ultimately, it is for the district magistrates called collectors, called deputy commissioners, and their police counterparts, SPs, deputy commissioners, commissioners, IGs, who have to kind of finally take a view from situation to situation. But as I said, broad guidelines are there. DOs shall identify, which they have already done, the available grounds for the meetings. And DOs have been instructed, CEOs have been instructed to print a list of those grounds district-wise in the English as well as vernacular papers, so that people are aware which grounds are available in which state. To the best of my knowledge, the CEOs have started doing it in their respective states. Otherwise, now that the announcement is made today, they'll do it in the next two, three days.